What's that, Ranger? Is that a bison? Hey, is that a bison? Terry and Cindy O'Keefe. We've been camping together for more than 40 years, and we invite you to join us in a 12-episode adventure as we explore the Yukon and Alaska. The Alaska Highway all 1,387 miles, or 2,232 kilometers, was built in a little more than eight months in 1942 to provide a supply line to Alaska after Japanese attacks in the Pacific. And while it's called the Alaska Highway, almost 90% of it runs through Canada. The Alaska Highway, or the Alcan as it's often referred to, offers adventure, vistas, wildlife, and great camping. Oh, look, a sheep. That is if you have the right mindset and give yourself enough time to enjoy the drive. There are some horror stories about the Alaska Highway, but if you do follow a few tips, it really is an unforgettable and beautiful journey. So here's tip number one, slow down. Speed limits in Canada are generally 80 to 100 kilometers an hour. That's 50 to 62 miles an hour. But if you are going 60 miles per hour, you're probably going to miss a lot. Ranger, let's we'll see the bear. Come here. And by saying slow down, we don't mean become a traffic hazard, but allow yourself to, you know, to take it easy, enjoy the scenery, look for some wildlife, especially around Stone Mountain and Muncho Lake. Those are really beautiful areas. We did talk to some uh, Alaskan travelers who'd said they saw absolutely no wildlife on their trip up the Yalkan. And you know, when we asked more about it, they acknowledged that they had basically flown up the highway. So we suggest you make the journey itself a priority, not just the destination. There's hikes that you can stop and take for an hour, and some communities along the way have sites or museums that aren't just interesting, they give you a chance to get out from behind the wheel and take a break. And slowing down a bit can also help you avoid problems. Most of the Alaska Highway is paved with good shoulders and plentiful pull-offs, but you can't let that lull you into a false sense of security. It is beautiful scenery, but it is not a beautiful road. There are unexpected frost heaves, potholes, and areas of broken pavement, especially between Destruction Bay in the Yukon and Tok, Alaska, where much of the road is built over permafrost. So here's tip number two, be willing to use all the road to avoid hazards. If you see potholes or broken sections in your lane, slow down. And if it's safe to do so, use the oncoming lane to avoid them. In a few spots, you might even need to weave around between the lanes. Of course, this means paying close attention, not only to what's coming towards you, but what's behind you. You don't wanna move into that oncoming lane when you're about to be overtaken. And it's worth noting that uh, on many of the northern highways, uh, road hazards are marked by little orange flags or cones or signs. Make sure that you watch for them. And wavy road markings are also a good indicator of looming frost heaves. And while many road hazards are marked, sometimes you just can't help yourself. The worst single pothole we encountered actually looked like a new patch. Oh, cow. And the video really doesn't do that impact justice. After we hit that hole, we stopped immediately, uh, you know, to inspect the truck and trailer. And we expected to find uh, bent rims, but you know, we, we were lucky. There was, there was no damage, but it certainly woke us up and uh, it was a very fresh reminder to remain vigilant as we were driving. And one last bit of advice about slowing down if you are driving slower than other traffic and are holding them up, when it's safe to do so, just pull over or slow down and help them get by. You'll find that in Alaska, there are actually laws about it. 
Tip number three, expect some delays from construction. The section of the Alaska Highway between Dawson Creek and Whitehorse was generally in very good condition, but there were construction zones on the Alcan and on most northern highways. In fact, we encountered two construction areas on the Klondike Highway that each took more than 20 minutes to drive. Detour left. Yeah. <laughs> So these areas can be muddy or dusty depending on the weather. So tip number four is related to this. Make sure your RV's windows and roof vents are closed when driving through construction areas or on any gravel roads, unless you want a rig full of dust. We actually discovered dust was getting in around the wheel well of one of the trailers in the cupboard that housed our oven and our oven, <laughs> we, it was so full that we cleaned it three times and I think there's still dust in there. Okay, so I'm going to get in line for gas here. If you want to go in and get us a spot for the night, see if they've got something that we can along the river that's nice. Now, tip number five might not apply to everyone, but it certainly applied to us because when we're hauling our trailer, our truck's fuel range is severely diminished. Get fuel anytime you can. Now, we did carry an extra five gallons in a jerry can, and there were a couple of times we were really glad to know it was there. We never had to use it. Uh, but we did have a couple of uh, sections between Phillips when our gas light came on. So we're here at uh, Bucking Horse uh, River Lodge. We needed uh, gas to make it to Fort Nelson. And they've got an automated card lock system here. And one note, some gas stations are actually just public card locks. So you'll need a credit card that works in Canada. Visa and MasterCard are usually pretty safe bets. Having said that, we'd also recommend carrying enough Canadian cash with you that you could fill up your vehicle in case you encounter a fuel station uh, where the internet's gone down and they're not able to take uh, debit or credit. And to help navigate any gas station questions, the Visitor Center in Dawson Creek has a free one-page resource that lists all the fuel stations and campgrounds on the Alcan and the distances between. We used that piece of paper every day. Ours got... Uh, <laughs> It looked pretty wrinkled by the time we were done with it. We're always on the lookout for talented, motivated people to join our Alaska team. Text sub -hire. Finally, tip number six. Expect communication challenges. There will be many long sections on the Alaska Highway where there is no service. And ultimately, your Sirius satellite radio is going to quit working too. Um, so we really recommend downloading some music, podcasts, uh, audiobooks. Uh, we enjoyed a couple of classics about the area, about the, the Yukon and Alaska. Uh, Call of the Wild uh, and Into the Wild were two of our favorites. Finally, we thought we would share a few highlights from our drive up the Alcan. Of course, we stopped in Dawson Creek at mile zero for the, for the requisite photo op. Uh, and then just behind the grain elevator that you'll see when you're there uh, is the visitor center. And we popped in there, staff was very friendly. Uh, and they were able to update us on where we were going to uh, encounter any construction. And that's where we got that one page handout that we found so helpful listing all the gas stations and campgrounds. We got this, our first uh, stone chip. It was already early afternoon when we hit the road because we needed to have our windshield repaired. Yep, we took a stone chip that morning approaching Dawson Creek and just a quick hats off to Glacier Autoglass who took us in with no appointment and got us back on the road and they only charged us 30 bucks. We spent that night at Sakani River uh, Campground. It was a quiet, rustic campground that generates its own electricity and accepts only cash as payment. Uh, while it is an older campground, the woman who managed it was friendly and welcoming, and the babbling Sakani River made for a peaceful first night on the Alaska Highway. Day two on the Alcan found good weather and great road conditions. We passed uh, by Fort Nelson and we actually stopped into the local museum, which is right on the highway. To call the collection of artifacts, taxidermy, antique vehicles, and rather curious displays eclectic is an understatement, but it was a great place to learn a little local history and get out from behind the wheel.
north of Fort Nelson, we really started to experience the Canadian Rockies. But first, we had to make a quick stop at Tesla Mountain Lodge for one of their self-described best cinnamon buns in the galactic cluster. Terry actually almost got trampled by a deer while he was taking the picture of his cinnamon bun. <laughs> all, I, all I can say is it was worth it. They were really good. The drive from here in the Stone Mountain area is stunning and that beauty continues to the Muncho Lake area. And both Stone Mountain and Muncho Lake have provincial parks for camping. Honestly, if we had known how beautiful this area was going to be, we would have planned a few extra days and stayed at those provincial parks because it was incredible. But instead, we, we did push on, uh, but we took every chance that we could to, to pull over, take in all that beauty, and even go for a few short hikes. Ultimately, we pushed a bit further north to Toad River Lodge for the night and enjoyed a nice meal in the restaurant. It was just a short two-hour drive on day three to Liard Hot Springs Provincial Park. This should be a must stop for all Alaska Highway travelers. Whether you spend the night in the campground like we did, or just to soak in the incredible springs. And if you do spend the night, know that the campground is surrounded by an electric fence to keep the bears out, and that the boardwalk to the springs themselves is a good place to see some wildlife. We saw our first moose of the trip here. And after a quick dip in the springs again on the morning of day four. It was back on the road, only to be stuck in our first traffic jam on the Alcan. Our second traffic jam was even bigger. He's walking right in front of us. After another short drive, we crossed into the Yukon and from there headed to Watson Lake and the Sign Post Forest. Since 1942, when Private Carl Lindley of the 341st Engineers first erected a sign pointing to his hometown, travelers have been adding to the forest, which now has an estimated 85,000 signs. So what do you think? We put this one here? Does that work? That works, okay. We actually had one made before leaving to put up. And this is a place that's really worth uh, stopping and exploring. There's a very much a shared sense of adventure here. So after visiting the signpost forest, we pressed on there, driving further than we expected and ended up spending the night at the Marsh Lake Yukon campground. For only $20 a night, the Yukon government campgrounds provide free firewood and beautifully kept campgrounds. Now the sites are strictly first come first serve. Registration is done via cash deposit at the campground kiosk. And just a tip, remember to check any registration tag on a campsite post before actually taking that site. It might look empty, but it could actually be booked by someone who's just not currently in the site particularly with so many uh, you know truck campers and van campers out there they'll the site would be look empty when it's actually occupied it was just a short drive day five to bring us to whitehorse and we're going to explore whitehorse in a future episode um, but continuing along the alcan a uh, couple of hours past whitehorse you're going to come to the kluwani lake region this is a beautiful spot with Plentiful boondocking sites in a beautiful Yukon territorial campground called Congdon Creek. And I'm standing at the, at the uh, driveway of our campsite and it's got this gorgeous view of the mountains and a, and a glacier there. And uh, here's the campsite. And directly behind the campsite is Kluwani Lake. What an incredible view. Now we spent two nights here on our way back and absolutely loved it. There was a grizzly wandering in the park, but they do have a fenced area for anyone in a tent. And because it was late in the season, the northern lights were viewable. And while my first attempt to photograph them was pretty atrocious, it was a great experience.
just west of Kluwani is Destruction Bay, and this is where the road conditions truly did start to deteriorate. We recommend using extra caution driving from here to the border and further along all the way to Toke, Alaska. So just a quick closing thought. We loved the drive up the Alcan. Uh, admittedly, uh, we were a little bit nervous when we started out, uh, but taking it easy, driving slow when we needed to, really helped us take it all in and it was an incredible experience. If you liked this video, if you found the information helpful, we'd really appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel. And it was kind of a race to get up here to make it first, to make the money off of those miners. On our next episode, exploring Whitehorse and the historic Klondike Gold Rush town, Dawson City. Happy camping, everyone.